In this video I'm showing images and videos taken at various locations on a recent photographic trip to Snowdonia and Anglesey. In this video I'm looking at photographing landscapes, seascapes and I'm using the OM-1 and I'm away for a week's holiday in Snowdonia and Anglesey and this morning what I'm actually photographing is Penmon Lighthouse. You can see the lighthouse in the distance there and also this big island there which is Puffin Island. And I'm going around, I'm using the OM-1 and either the 12 to 40 mil 2.8 lens or the 8 to 25 mil um, f4 lens. I'm actually using uh, a Lee soft edge grad um, on the actual front of the lens just to sort of give a little bit more detail actually in the sky but there's quite nice clouds today and I've been walking around here taking all the pictures or most of the pictures handheld. The great thing about the Olympus is that I can take pictures handheld quite easily down to half a second and even a second exposure. Anything longer than that and I have been doing some long exposure pictures as well anything longer than that and I'm probably going to put it on a tripod um, but conditions have been very, very changeable. Um, we've been sort of the last week or so, we've been staying at a cottage and we've been sort of dodging the, the, the rain showers sort of uh, virtually every day. In fact, yesterday we couldn't even get out the, out of the cottage. It was 60 mile winds and almost horizontal sort of rain. But today's actually brightened up quite nice and there's some good clouds. So what I'm going to do is wander around there and take an, uh, a number of pictures. I'll also be showing pictures in the second part of the video where I'll be showing the stills where I'm actually photographing um, at different locations. I've been to um, Lynn Ogwin, we've been to other places and that sort of thing and I'll be showing the stills from that and also explaining how I've taken them, uh, what shutter speeds, ISO uh, and what techniques I've used. Normally speaking, shots like this, I can get this all in one shot, no problems at all. There's only a slight difference in, in exposure between the sky and the foreground. So I'm going to get more or less uh, a balanced exposure. Um, the histogram's looking fine, I'm not clipping at each at either end. So what I'll do is I'll go around and, and take a few more pictures. I'll probably go down to the edge down there and use the wide angle lens there's some nice puddles in amongst the uh, the lichen and also the seaweed um, and they make really nice foreground interest so what I'll do is I'll carry on doing that and we'll see what we get. Having the freedom to take shots handheld meant I could wander around and look for different compositions and viewpoints. In these situations, it's best to take shots in both landscape and portrait format and then decide which is best on returning home and looking at the images on the computer. This image was taken handheld at 0.8 of a second, which is probably the lowest shutter speed that I can safely handhold and still get sharp pictures. Some people will claim to be able to get sharp pictures with the Olympus at lower shutter speeds, but for me, the cutoff point is round about one second. After a while I decided that maybe it would be best to put the camera on a tripod and try some longer exposures. Putting the camera into shutter priority or manual meant that I could use the live ND facility. Looking back towards the hills and mountains on the mainland, there were some moody clouds hanging over the top of the mountains. Using the 12 to 40 mil of the tripod and using live ND, I was able to try some nice long exposure shots as the waves break over the rocks. Another location that I was keen to visit was Newborough Beach and Landwin Island on the southwest coast of Anglesey. Having seen pictures taken at these locations, I knew they would prove to be productive providing I was lucky enough to get some reasonable conditions. From the car park in Newborough Forest, it's a short walk down to the beach and from this viewpoint, the hills and mountains on the Lynn Peninsula make a lovely backdrop, especially with some strong clouds hanging over the tops of the mountains. You can access Landwin Island by turning right and walking along Newber Beach for about 20 minutes. I found that it took a far longer to reach the island because I was constantly stopping to take shots along the beach. When there's a high tide, 
Landwind Island is cut off for a few hours, so best not to visit when there is a high tide forecast. The classic shot that everyone takes is of the lighthouse with a stepped path leading the eye into the picture, with the mountains of the Lynn Peninsula in the background. Although I did try this competition, I felt the light was a bit harsh. So I walked down onto the beach and this gave me a different composition. This is one of those times where wearing Wellington boots is a must. For this shot, the water was coming well over my ankles. I then went up onto the sand dunes and used these as foreground interest leading into the picture. Wandering around Landwin Island, there are lots of different pictures and composition. This shot was another one taken on the island and I quite like the distortion that the 8 to 25 mm lens gives when shooting from a low viewpoint. As I walked back along the beach, there was some beautiful lighting and clouds, so again it took some while to reach the car park. This was a jellyfish that had been stranded on the beach, and I used it as foreground interest to lead into the composition. As we neared the car park, I walked up to the sand dunes and using the 8 to 25 mm a series of images. Hand holding the camera allowed me to work quickly and wander around the dunes looking for different compositions. I'm going to finish the video showing some of the images taken at various locations in the Snowdonia area. In this bit of the video what we've done is we've parked up by the side of Lynn Ogwin. There's a good lay-by up there and it's really not too far to, to actually walk down here. What I'm using this time is I'm using the OM-1 with the 8 to 25 mil set at 8 mil and I'm actually using a, a polarizing filter an ND soft grad and I'm using live ND and I'm using ND8 that's giving me at F Eight. That's giving me four seconds exposure. The ND filter will just hold a little bit of detail in on the sky. And I've got these rocks as foreground interest. I'm actually focusing manually. I've got it on the tripod. With a long exposure, four seconds. I should get some nice, you know, nice movement on the water. It's quite choppy today, so the reason I'm using a long exposure is because I actually want to smooth the water out. And that's done it quite nicely at four seconds. I can go down to even longer, so what I'll actually do is change the ND to ND32. And that's giving me 15 seconds. With it being on the tripod, there's not too much wind. Uh, I don't have any problems with camera shake or anything like that. But what I'll also be doing is I'll actually be taking a few shots handheld, probably around about half a second or something like that. Um, that's really nice. It's made the water almost look like glass. So one advantage as of the Olympus is that even at half a second I can still sort of hand hold the, the, the camera. So that's what I'll do now. This was one of the handheld images taken at Ogwen using the rocks as foreground interest. It was taken in portrait format at a half a second at f8. Unfortunately the clouds really did roll in and it started to rain so I only managed to get a few shots before having to pack up. It's not a problem getting the OM1 wet, but it's a pain having to keep wiping rain droplets off the front of the lens. I did try this shot looking down the lake in the other direction towards Ogwin Cottage, but I was then photographing into the direction of the rain which made it even more difficult. The next day we went to Lynn Idwell and this shot was taken from the small footbridge as you start to walk up towards Idwell. Here you get the waterfall flowing over the rocks and using a long exposure, in this case one second, it helps to give the feeling of movement. As you can see the light was quite dull and it was drizzling, but I quite liked the effect. This is another one of those classic shots, this time of the Afron Idwall flowing out from the Nidwall. As the river cascades down into the valley, the mountain of Penarowen makes a lovely backdrop in the composition. 
With the OM1 on the tripod, I could vary the shutter speed and then decide afterwards on which effect I liked best. This was taken with the 8 25mm and this was a fifth of a second at f8. Because it was raining, we did not stop at Idwell for very long, but these are a couple of shots I took handheld whilst walking part of the way around the lake and also on the walk back down to the car park. For this shot of Trevan, I used this big boulder as foreground interest and I like the way the clouds are just catching the top of the mountain. The following day was brighter and we decided to go to Linguinant in the Nantguinant Valley. The shore at the side of the lake is easily accessible and there are laybys by the side of the main road for parking. Views looking back along and across the lake are very photogenic and there are lots of rocks, boulders and fence posts for different foreground interests. Further down the road is Lindinas and if you park at the far end of the lake you can go through the kissing gate and follow the path around the far side of the lake. There are lots of photographic opportunities as you walk around this path ranging from lone trees to reed beds and lichen covered boulders. There's an attractive stream that you have to cross and from here you can get some quite nice slow shutter speed effects as the water cascades over the rocks with the 40mm end of the 12 to 40 mil lens. Later on we drove to Thlinaduarkin, which is a very attractive lake with some lovely mountains in the background. Very close to the small car park is a boathouse, and I photographed these boats tied up to the small jetty. It was quite late in the day, and the light was starting to go, but using a 10 second exposure I could smooth the water out which enabled me to get the mountains in the background reflected in the lake. Walking around the lake there is plenty of different viewpoints. This shot was taken handheld at the tenth of a second at f5.6. In this image you can see there is a slight ripple on the water. Unfortunately the light really had started to go by this time so with this shot I had the camera mounted on the tripod and use a longer 10 second exposure. And this really has flattened out the water perfectly. On the last morning of our trip we did stop off for a short walk up the mountains towards Afron Lua. We only walked part of the way up the hillside because we had a long journey home. So it did not go as far as the classic shot of the waterfall with Trefan and Ogwin Valley in the distance. Hopefully this will be a shot for a return visit. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you plan to visit a trip to Snowdonia and Anglesey, some of the locations that I've shown are well worth visiting. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel if you wish to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.